Welcome to Reminding My Own Business webinar series presented by the Fremont Group. My name is Dirk Peters. I'm the Executive Director of the Fremont Group. Uh, the webinar series follows the book Minding My Own Business, of which has details of the six responsibilities of the small business owner. In the last two months, we examined the sixth responsibility, which is that you must have fun. To have fun, you must eliminate stress. And so our four brief webinars on this topic, this being the third, deal with the issues of stress. The Fremont Group is a nonprofit organization serving small to mid-sized business owners since 2001. We provide success partners for management consulting, mentoring, and coaching. In addition, our accounting division does outsourced bookkeeping, payroll, and tax filing, and we will refer to you selected vendors for tax planning and your financial lending needs. This Minding My Own Business webinar series roughly follows the book Minding My Own Business, which I wrote, and it's available to our patrons through our Patreon site. This is the second follow-up to the introduction to your sixth responsibility as a small business owner, which is to have fun. In this webinar, you will examine the second cause, identified cause of stress, which is compensation. Sometimes owners forget that if their business should fail, they lose everything, but their employees most likely will go across the street and get a new job, and possibly with a raise. The fact that you shoulder this risk alone is the reason why you are justified in receiving compensation well above that of your employees. If you have ever felt guilty about making money, just ask your spouse what they think. You deserve to be the highest paid person in the organization. You deserve to have the greatest perks, and you deserve to have the most time off. However, you only deserve it if you do your job. Not unlike an employee who you expect to do their job, you must do your job to get your appropriate compensation. So if you must do your job, what is your job? We identify six tenets of your job. First of all, is to make sure that the business is open today, tomorrow, and in the future. Second, to create financial security within the company so that your regular obligations can be met from the financial resources that you have retained. Thirdly, treat your employees with respect. Fourthly, earn a predetermined minimum mandatory percentage of profit. Fifthly, drive sales for growth. And sixthly, plan for the future and implement the actions that are required to attain that future. That, in a nutshell, is your job description. So if that is your job, what is not your job? Anything else? Anything other than those six items is simply not your job. You may choose to work in the company, but your job is to run the company. It's fine for you to choose to work in the company and perform operational, sales, or administrative tasks. However, the more of those tasks that you choose to do, the more you are limited in your time and your availability to actually run the company and do your job. This ties directly to the issue of compensation. A quick task for you to do is to do a little self-evaluation. Find your income statement. And we're going to do a slight revision on that income statement. Find the line for wages and see where your compensation is included in that. Make sure you subtract from your compensation your payroll and then determine what it would have taken to pay someone else to do the tasks that you are currently doing. Add that amount back into your payroll. Chances are you are underpaying yourself for the tasks that you are performing. If you're performing a management role or accounting or sales or whatever it is, uh, what would it take to pay someone else to do that job? That's what you have to put back into the payroll for this task. After you've made those two adjustments, look at the effect it would have on your bottom line profit. This is the real earnings or the real profit of your business. 
and this adjusted profit needs to be the source of the majority of your income. Is your business really earning enough real profit? That is the question. And are you able from that profit to pay yourself the compensation that you desire? If it's not, how can your business make enough money in profit to pay you properly? Very simple. Do your job. Item one of your job description is make sure the business is open today, tomorrow, and in the future. If business isn't open, you aren't going to be able to make your income from it. Very simple. Uh, your weekly routine must include taking a few minutes to assess the risks that your company faces and plan ahead so that you can avoid them. This is your job. Secondly, you have to create financial security within that company so that your regular obligations can be met from the financial reserves that you have retained. Usually what that means is, do you have enough cash on hand to pay all your bills for a few months? Do you or don't you? If you don't, it's because you probably never focused on actually doing so. It requires a focus on cash retention, which is often the downfall of many small businesses. Many small businesses will go on for years and years and not worry about cash retention, and then when a difficult time hits, not have enough cash reserves to get them through the downtime. So what is your plan for cash retention? Third, treat your employees with respect. What does that mean? It means paying them a fair wage and make sure that their checks clear. Nothing will disturb morale more than paychecks that don't clear. What do you do with employees? Three things. You recruit them, you develop them, and you retain them. Part of the respect is to recruit people that are appropriate, develop them appropriately, which means train them and give them opportunities, and then retain them by having challenges, benefits, and other things that are retention items. You create incentives for performance. So while holding people accountable for results. This is an entire topic of uh, a workshop uh, under uh, organizational structure, but uh, let's just remember that you have to have incentives for performance and you have to hold people accountable. And you cannot have one without the other. They are a yin and a yang. You have to create an opportunities for advancement. If you want to have retention of people, they have to feel like there's a place that they can go and grow within your organization. How do you get opportunities for advancement? Generally, it's through growth. You must provide a safe work environment. That goes without saying. And have personal relationships with your key employees and empower them to make appropriate decisions. The more buy-in, the more responsibilities, the more uh, things you're able to delegate and get done, the more they feel trusted, the more they uh, feel empowered and uh, fulfilled in their jobs, particularly with your climbers. And uh, it also simply makes your job easier. You must earn a minimum percentage of profit. This also was covered earlier in the responsibility on uh, earning a minimum mandatory percentage of profit, but it is a clear focal point of your job description also. Profit itself is actually very simple. Simply spend less than you bring in. Uh, it's just a math problem. It came in, that went out, all right, here's our profit. We can do it. However, it can become much more sophisticated than that once you get into it, and you should learn to use the management tools uh, that are available to you. Learn to use profit and expense tools, such as a percentage-based variable budget, break-even analysis, use of profit center, identification of key profit uh, variables, drive the numbers, drive them with focus, drive them with a constant focus uh, for yourself and within the organization, and you will earn that minimum mandatory percentage of profit if you put the plan together to begin with and you're executing that plan. Fifthly, Drive sales. You must have growth. 
without growth, you will not have opportunities for your key people to have advancement and they will leave. When you start losing and having turnover amongst your climbers and your key people, uh, that starts a death spiral. So you must have growth. You must be your company's super salesperson and sales not only externally, but internally. Every encounter with every employee is a sales meeting. Every sale that consumes overhead is a good sale. The smaller your company, the more you are at risk. The over-reliance on any single customer is risk. Each day you must include a sales meeting to drive the numbers. The sales meeting may have other people in it or maybe just yourself, but you have to have a sales focus each day on saying what actions can we take today, tomorrow, the next week to drive sales. Plan. Plan and plan some more. There must be, of course, a strategic plan in place to begin with, and then at least a monthly update of that plan should be part of your regular routine. That will take you back to looking at the future risks. It will take you back at looking at future opportunities. Uh, you can do uh, the analysis and uh, keep yourself focused on where you're going. Remember your strategic plan is not written in stone. Man plans and God laughs. We must have a flexible plan so that we can relate to the changes and the constant changes in the small business world. Do your job and you will create financial compensation. Financial compensation that is generated from the profit that your business is generating is sustainable and can and should and will exceed that of employees. Compensation for tasks is a limited amount. Compensation from profit is not. Your financial compensation should rest in the profit of your company. The job outline of running a company should take 8 to 15 hours a week. This allows you the option of either getting additional compensation in the form of, not, of working fewer hours or allows you to do tasks within the company for which you can be paid the employee wage on top of your uh, compensation as an owner. And you can also use that time to create other business opportunities, either within or external from your own company. There's a second type of compensation, and that is time. Since it only takes 8 to 15 hours a week to man run a company, if you can do the job of running the company, you have the option of doing other things. Also look at it this way. Think of your company and then think of people that own five and six companies the same size as yours. And if you're working 50 hours a week, I can promise you they're not working 300 hours a week to do it. So what do we want to do with this time that can be generated by doing your job? For many business owners, it was a dream of not having to punch a clock and, not, and being able to choose their hours, uh, which was one of the major attractions of starting the business to begin with, but an attraction that most of you have not attained. If you own a job, you have just traded one boss for another, and you're only being compensated as to the tasks that you are performing. If you own a business, you run the business and attain compensation not only unlimited and by the, only by the profit uh, that your company is making, but you can also attain the compensation of time. Time for your family, time for yourself, time for other things. This can be one of the most valuable types of compensation that you can get. So quickly, let's do another task. Write down what you would do with your time if you only worked 20 hours a week with six weeks of annual vacation and regular long weekends in your job, what would you do with your time? Would you spend more with your family? Would you start another business? Write that down. Think about that. 
maybe you would simply choose to work in the business because that's what you like to do. You know what? That's fine too if that's the decision that you are making. But write down what you would do with that other time if that was your only obligation was a 20 hour week with lots of vacations and long weekends. Look at that list and then decide if you want to do your job of running your company to attain this end. In conclusion, a lack of compensation creates stress. Compensation can be time. It can also be money, as we saw earlier. Lack of compensation is a result of not understanding your job as the owner and doing other tasks instead. The majority of the mentoring and coaching that is provided by the success partners of the Fremont Group focuses you upon this end. By starting your business and growing it to where it has created for you an opportunity, it's an opportunity that very few people have. You have in front of you an incredible opportunity. It's the opportunity to receive compensation of money and time well above the norm of a normal worker, and yet with significantly less taxing hours than an employee. If you are serious about attaining this, give us a call, 303-338-9300. Again, I am Dirk Peters of the Fremont Group. Thank you for listening to our webinar. We will have one more before the year end. 